Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Bivens, and I'm here uh, for another episode of The Hammer of God. We're going to be discussing discernment in the Christian home tonight. Put me off in the corner that way everyone can see the text better. On Sunday, my text was Luke 12, 54 through 56. And Jesus is speaking to the crowds. And he points out that these people have clear signs in the weather all around them of what's going to happen. And what he's saying is, you have just as clear of signs of what God is doing, and you're not interpreting those. You say you want to. You say you want to follow God. You say you want to follow Christ, but it doesn't appear that that's the case because you're not interpreting what God has given you. It could not be more clear for these people that God was in their midst, that Jesus himself was the Messiah that they said they were waiting for, and they missed it. And it's because they didn't interpret correctly. They didn't interpret the present time. They didn't practice discernment. And that's what discernment is. It's looking at what God has given us in terms of our present condition, looking at what he gives us in his word, because they had hundreds and thousands of years of his word. And it's then listening to God and listening to godly elders through prayer, and then living faithfully in accordance with those things. These people were not going to do that. And so what I want to talk about tonight is discernment in the home and I want to apply this to a specific issue uh, when discernment in our life is something that we have to be practicing all the time if you're not practicing discernment you're really going to get weaker at it and so what music you listen to is it honoring to God is it worthwhile does it uh, build me up does it turn me back away from Christ and his message we need to practice discernment over the music we listen to. And I, I think some Christian music can be uh, more dangerous than secular music because it pretends to have godliness and yet it offers a false god. And so we have to practice discernment. We should practice discernment. I tell everyone this as often as I can when we listen to our pastors. When your pastor preaches, he is not your final and sole authority. Now, he is the authority God has placed in your life, but he's held to a standard of God's word. So you should test him by what God's word has said. And <laughs> what I'm going to question everyone today is this. Public school. Should our children today be in public school? Let's practice discernment. In the public schools today, more often than not, your children will encounter different ideas that you may not feel they're prepared to handle, to engage with, and to respond appropriately. They may be exposed to things regarding sexuality. Uh, they may be exposed to things regarding uh, beliefs in creation. Uh, beliefs in purpose in this world and beliefs in authority who really has authority is it the teacher is it the government is it the home is it the church and so should Christians have their children in public school I know a lot of people that I follow um, people that I respect and their opinions I listen to would immediately say no it is not wise for any Christian to have their children in public school. I get that. Because the public school today, more than it ever has been in the past, 
And it's always been questionable. Today promotes a worldview that is completely inconsistent with the scriptures. So what do Christian parents do? Well, discernment might say, well, we take our kids out. We uh, remove them. We put them in a a private school. We put them in homeschooling. And, you know, we do everything we can to insulate, not necessarily isolate our children, but insulate them, protect them. And I think one of the most common responses to that that I've heard is if we do that, our kids will not be salt and light. Our kids will will not be able to win that ground and take care of and, and spread the gospel in the uh, schools anymore. And what I would ask is, when did it become the responsibility of our children, whom God has given us to protect, the, the little ewe lambs, the little baby sheep in, in the pasture, when did it become their role to do these things? You see, the reality is it's not. Uh, nowhere in Scripture do we see God saying that the, the babies, the, the ones who are immature, the, the ones who have not become mature, who have not had solid food, who have not figured out how to use their discernment to distinguish good from evil, nowhere do you see scripture saying go to the wolves. These little ones should go to the wolves and convert the wolves and, and argue with the wolves and, and teach truth in light of the wolves. That it's just not it's not wise. And the reality is we are to protect them. We are to guide them. One thing I think I would ask every parent is this. If your public school, if you lived in a different place and your public school taught your kids science, math, um, uh, English, or reading, whatever way you want to put it, and, and all these different things, and it taught it with a worldview that there is a God, and that God is Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet, but it was teaching them all the public education things that you still believe they were supposed to know, but its worldview was no longer the secular atheism that we find in our country, but it was Islam. Would you send your kids then? Your 10-year-olds? Your 15-year-olds? If their teacher was reminding them that Allah was Allah is the only true God? And that everyone is called to submit to him. Would you continue to send them or would you seek a a different alternative? I I think most Christians would seek an alternative at that point if they could find it. I think that's where discernment comes into play. We don't see. Notice the first thing we have to do is we have to look. Look at the situation we're in. Do you realize how far away our public schools are today than they were in the past, or how much they are opposed to Christ and his message than they were in the past. Now, I want to say this. You will find some public schools that might be better than others. Small towns. I live in a small town. As of right now, I'm not worried about our public school. But are you? Are you talking? Are you practicing discernment? You see, my heart is to keep my daughter in this school, if I can. But I don't know that I can. I have to see where the school is going to go. I have to see if they're going to cave on issues that really children are not ready, they're not trained to deal with. And so as a parent, I've been given that role. I've been given that authority. I want to take us to first or second Timothy four. Second Timothy four, Paul speaking to Timothy tells Timothy that he is to preach the word. He is to be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching, because there's going to be a time when people will not listen. 
And so they'll find others to teach them a message that they want to hear. I cannot tell you how many students I hear coming out of public schools who just have a completely different message than their Christian parents. And some are going to only blame the parents for that. And I think there's wisdom in that. Now listen, I'm not trying to beat up on anyone. But Christian parents, if you trust the school to lead your children, to guide them, which by the way, they were, they were given to you by God for you to protect as Christian parents, then I think discernment tells us this. If they stay in the school, not only should we be speaking to their teachers, to the principals, to the school boards, but we should also, when they get home, be trying to find out everything they learned, address the things. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter what it was, whether it was math or reading or, or history. And history gets spun a lot today by all kinds of people. Whatever they learned, find a way to connect them back to Christ with that. Find a way to question them and, and get them thinking about these things. I, I don't think it's a sin for a Christian parent to leave their kid in a public school. I do think it's a sin to do it without discernment, without doing everything you can to be involved at every level so that your children are protected. That's what discernment says. Discernment says we test everything. We look at everything, and then we act in a way that is honoring to God so that we can protect those whom God has given us to protect so that we can become more mature, so that we can become more equipped ourselves to handle future things, things that we don't even see on the horizon yet. This is what God's Word, this is what the hammer of God teaches us. Christians, not just in schooling, not just on what to do with your, your students your, or your, your children, but in every area of your life, Start practicing discernment now. If you don't, you will lose your children. And we will lose this nation. God bless everybody.